In a recent video, we went over building up a entry for armies on parade. What we've decided to do is enter our Leagues of Votan army with a display base into Armies of Parade, which is taking place next week, with this being round about the 16th. So what we're going to want to be doing is getting that sorted, but there were a few issues. One, we didn't have a Leagues of Votan army, and two, we didn't have a display base. So this is a relatively time-sensitive and heavy project. So what we're going to be doing is today finishing off the other half. Last time we managed to finish off all of the individual units and infantry and now we've got to paint up the actual base that we built in last episode as well as paint the leader for these guys. So let's jump in, we'll start off with the base and we're essentially going to be giving it a kind of zenithal undercoat prime which is going to go down with a black spray first followed by a spray of zandri dust from this brown zenithal prime what we want to do is start to add a few brighter colors and we can do this through overbrushing here we're going to work up through around three colors and we're going to use some of the old range of army painter colors these are semi okay for things like basing but i'm not a big fan of using them for models the first color that we're going to be using is a nice dark yellow tone and we can apply this in a overbrush across all of the base and then follow it up with a slightly desaturated yellow. This second round of overbrushing will be applied in application slightly lighter than the first across the entirety of the base, which will mean we will still have the first layer showing while this lighter, more desaturated color picks out and catches all of the raised areas. Then what we want to do is go a little bit further with at this point our final overbrush and we're going to be targeting this on all of the sharp edges and points closest to the viewers so this is going to be the edges of the pyramids but we can also pick out any plastic or sculpted stone details so on this base we've got things like the entrances the steps the pillars as well as any of the large cork rocks these layers of overbrushing will give us a really nice transition from a dark base coat which is obviously the brown that we've done up to a lighter slightly desaturated yellowy desert sort of tone but don't worry if it's looking a little bit bright at the moment we are going to be doing some steps a little bit later on which are just going to knock that back a little bit but before that we do need to paint all of the metal details and things like weapons defenses and things like that so to do that, we need to grab a black contrast and we can start to undercoat all of those elements. The easiest way to get a nice base coat here, in my opinion, is just to apply some black contrast. And this will cover all of the various elements that we want to be metal. This is because once dry, all of these black areas are going to be given a nice coat of a dark silver so that they are overall a shiny metallic area. This means we can then give them a final quick overbrush using a brighter, lighter silver targeting the tops of all of the weapons to give them a nice shine and bounce light. Once the metals are dry, we can then start to tackle giving everything a nice wash. And we could do this with an acrylic wash, but that would be quite expensive for the amount that you get in smaller pots, as well as it would dry quite quickly and give us slightly less working time. Against if we did oil washes. And this actually works out slightly cheaper as well because we can get a 40ml tube for around £7 and there are cheaper versions than the one that I'm using here. So all we need to do is mix up a couple of sienna colours and a black to give us a nice dark brown wash, dilute it with a fair amount of thinner and with a large brush we can start slapping it all over our base and all of our defences. With the wash mixed up and a relatively large brush in hand we can start to apply the wash all over the base from the guns to the rocks to the mountain tops. By working from the top to the bottom we can pull out any pooling excess areas across the pyramid and spread this across the base nicely. If there is any excess after we're done, we have the advantage because this is oil paints to come back and thin or remove some of these areas out using a sponge and some thinner. This will give us a nice semi-cohesive colour scheme across the base because we can make up a large amount of wash and we will still end up with the brighter edges and deeper recess colours because of the natural properties of oil seeping through into the recesses and giving us those lighter, yellower, browner tones on the richer top areas. Being honest, that's the base mostly done. What we now need to do is just let it dry and see how the oil wash comes out. If we think there's any areas that are overly pooly or excessively dense with oil paint, we can just mix up a little bit of thinner with a sponge. Well, apply some thinner to a sponge and then use that to remove any of the excess. But what we should have now is a nice transition for our base. So we can leave that 
while swiftly moving on to our leader. And that's because we haven't got long to get this all sorted, all put together and ready down to the store. So when painting the leader, we're naturally going to paint him to look the same as the rest of the army. But being the leader, he can be that slightly brighter, poppier colour, which will be that nice centrepiece of the army and draw attention in. And because this is just a single miniature, rather than how we painted the original guys, we can spend a little bit more time and use some methods that require a little bit more babying and time spent with each model, because we've only got one. So let's jump straight in. We are going to start off by using a dark green and a bright green on all of the hard armour plates. And we want to use these two colours to wet blend the brightest sections of the armour. This can be done by mixing a small amount of a acrylic retarder into our dark green, which we will then use to base coat the armour sections. This will keep the paint wet for longer, which means that while it is wet, we can load our brush with some of the bright green and then use this to apply where the highlights will be. Once we've put down that brighter colour, we can then come back and mix those two paints in at the transition point. And this will give us a really quick, smooth transition from our dark base coat colour up to our bright highlight. Now, you don't need to use acrylic retarder in any of these schemes. If you're wet blending, you can just do it completely fine with just acrylic paints. However, because acrylic paints dry relatively quickly, it can be nice to just add a very small amount of the retarder so that you get a longer working time and we can get some nice blends and get some nice mixing on the model. With that done, we're essentially going to be using the same principles, but we're going to be moving through the different varying colours on the model. So we're going to be kicking it off with browns, oranges and things like that. With the greens ticked off, we can do the same for the leathers across the model. This is going to be a wet blend between a dark brown and a mid skin tone colour. As before, we're going to be mixing a small amount of acrylic retarder into the dark brown, applying this across the varying sections of leather before we then clean our brush, add a little bit of flesh, and then apply this across the raised highlighted areas, blending in the transition points, so that we have a nice movement from the darker brown to our lighter skin highlights. On elements like cloaks and coats, we can spend a little bit longer, potentially doing a couple of passes with the skin tone so that we get a nicer, brighter transition given the length of the cloak. Once our browns are nice and the blends are in place, we can grab a black paint and then essentially use this to base coat all of the areas that we want to be silver or any areas that we genuinely want black. So this could be things like boots, pouches and various trim lines. Most of these black areas won't really need wet blending or anything like that. You can if you want to, but they're either going to be used as a base coat for silver, in which case wet blending is pointless because we're going to be painting silver over it or we're going to be painting such a small area that the wet blending is kind of superfluous. So for things like the boots, the pouches and the piping, we just needed to make up a quick highlight colour, which was essentially our black base coat with a tiny amount of our skin tone, which keeps it relatively cohesive with the rest of the model that's got this as a highlight in there somewhere. So therefore we can just use general edge highlighting on these smaller black sections. Before we move on to the metals, we need to tackle a few more places. And the first one is going to be base coating all of our bronze areas in a dark brown. This will be a nice clean layer and it's designed to give us a similar tone to our metals. While we have the brown out, we also want to attack some of the ascent areas which are going to be painted orange. In keeping with the painted methods we've used so far, we will be wet blending this brown with a brighter orange colour across any of the panels that we want in this colour. So for example, on this leader, we're going to be targeting weapons panels, side arms, as well as the outside of the cloak. As before, we want to apply the base coat brown mixed with a small amount of retarder, and then mix in our bright orange and apply this to the brightest areas, blending in the transitions. You might often find that when you're going around and wet blending, if, especially if you're using weakest pigments, so things like yellows and oranges in some cases, that the colours get washed out and kind of muddied with the base coat colour that you're using. There are ways that we can fix that in the wet blending itself, but we're also going to be using a trick slightly later on to just give that a little bit of a boost. So make sure to stick around for that, but until then we need to do some metallics. 
and we're going to be starting off with a bronze going over some of our brown base coated areas. To tackle the metals is nice and simple and starting with the bronze we want to take a colour that is relatively close to our base coated brown tone. Here we've been able to match the hue quite closely so any areas we miss will blend in nicely and just look like they've got less shine. So all of the base coated brown areas get a nice coat of this bronze. Before we then look to take a silver and give all of the areas that we've given a black base coat but wanted metallic, they can get a nice coat of this silver and we're going to be targeting things like pipes and gun parts with this round of silver base coating. Once these metal areas are dry, we can essentially just give it a quick edge highlight and these edge highlights are just gonna be made up of slightly brighter metallic tones. So for the bronze, we've got a slightly brighter, goldier, bronzier tone. And then for the silvers, we've gone from a dark silver. Instead, we've grabbed a slightly lighter silver and this brighter silver can go on the edges of our silver areas, giving us that nice pop of shine and light reflecting off of our metallics. With that said, and all the highlighting and edge highlighting for the metals done, we can start to edge highlight and naturally highlight the other areas, which have all been wet blended. And we're gonna kick this off with some of the armor panels. And what we want to do is just grab the brightest color from our wet blend. So in this case, a bright green, and we can get to work with some glazing and some highlighting. For the armor panels, we can take the brighter green from our mix and then use this to edge highlight all of the rigid carapace armor panels. Once that's done, we can then thin down the same color and use this to glaze over the brightest sections of our wet blend, which will help to give it a nice punch of color. We can then do the same for all of the orange areas, catching any of the edges of any hard surfaces with a nice edge highlight of pure orange, and then glazing in the brightest areas on the softer wet blended sections like the robes. Now there's only really two main elements left on the model to paint and that is the power sword or power weapon as well as the skin, face or head. And for this the head itself is going to get a nice wet blended up look and we're going to be using a kind of reddish angry dwarf skin and we're making that up with a combination of a brown, a red and a skin. And for the hair, we're going to be going for black for the facial hair and the overall hair. Naturally, if you've got a preferred skin tone you'd rather use or different hair color, just paint that however you want. We're painting the hair the same as we painted the black boots. And let's get started with painting the skin with these colors as our base coat. We want to make up our mix of base coat skin, which is brown, red, flesh, and a tiny bit of acrylic retarder. And then apply this dark reddish angry skin tone across the face before we take our light skin tone from the mix and use this to wet blend in where the bright spots will be. Once this small amount of wet blending is dry, we can then take our pure light flesh tone, dilute it slightly, and then use this to glaze over the brightest parts of the skin, which will turn the skin into a more familiar Caucasian skin tone with deep, warm, angry recesses. With that done, we can move across to the power weapon or blade. And here we want to start from a black base coat so that our next steps have the most amount of impact. We want to apply a thin line of white to the inner recess where the blade would start and project from the hilt. Once this is dry, we want to grab a bright orange and glaze this across the whole blade. This will tint the white into a bright orange while also slightly tinting the black itself, giving it an orange hue. Then we want to repeat the process, but this time we're going to be using white strokes and pulling it towards the edge of the blade as opposed to the inner section of the blade. Once this is dry, we can then reglaze the whole blade in the orange and this will give us a bright punchy color. By doing this with the blade, we get a nice dual effect of heat. So we're going to get the brightest and most orange pungent amount of color coming from the center of the blade. And then this works out and then you get brightness at the edge of the blade where impacts will be. And we get to see a nice amount of transition because we're working from that black line essentially, which was our base coat across the blade. It's just a really nice easy way of getting a sharp effect. And if we want to, we can reinforce it further with further edge highlights and potentially even using neon glow style paints. And the advantage of the way that we've done this is you can do it with most colors. Obviously we've chosen orange in this one but you could do it with most colors, greens, blues, things like that. So with that said, that's the model mostly and if not basically done. So there are a couple of elements that we had to do potentially if we get time on the smaller guys, but it's currently the 20th. We've got about three days to get the last bit sorted. So what I think we should do is get all of these guys on the base 
see how they look as a final outcome. And then we can pack this up, potentially get a small amount of edge highlighting done on the original guys before we take it down to the store and show off our work. Taking a look at all of the models on the base and working around with these nice show shots. I think bearing in mind that we used a new paint range and we managed to pull this together in around two weeks. So that's two weeks to build and paint three bikers, 16 troops, one leader, and then build and paint a display base to go with them. I think this came out relatively nice, but naturally I'm slightly biased as I'm the one that put the work in. I'm going to take a few more days just to let this completely dry, let all of the oil paints that we've used across various different things dry out fully so that we don't have any worries. And then I might, if I've got time, touch up a couple of the areas of highlights if I have time before we run it to the store. However, as I said, I am slightly biased on this because I'm the one that spent the two weeks building it, so I've got that attachment to it. So I'm not a delusional person. I know it's not good enough to enter or win a golden demon or anything like that. But I think it came out really nice for the time we spent and it's a good way of getting our work on the tabletop. So let me know what you think. Should I have gone slightly further? Should I have made it a slightly bigger base? Should I have done a different theme? Is Space Dwarves and a Space Dwarven hold a little bit too much? I would be interested to find out, so do let me know. And if you haven't seen how we built up the original base, as well as these guys which are going on there shortly for the show reel you've already seen, I would suggest checking out this video here which is where we build up the base and paint the individual troops. And if you've already seen that, why not check out a different video? This is an IP smash video here, which I suggest you check out. We take Games Workshop's IP, another IP from somewhere else, and smash them together to make a fun little scene, diorama, or model. Check that out. Otherwise, what you need to do is make sure that you're subscribed so that we can see you next time.